My name is Yannick Penvo. I'm a solution architect working with Microsoft 55. I am an office development MVP, and you can reach me through the, the information that you can see here. So today we are going to talk about the Microsoft Graph subscription and how to get started with them uh, with Azure Functions. So as an introduction, what are um, Microsoft Graph subscription? They are, they are also known as webhooks. So if you know about webhooks in other system, they're basically the same in Microsoft Graph. Uh, they allow the subscribe any external system to receive notification that uh, of activities that have happened in your Microsoft 365 tenant. They are relayed through Microsoft Graph with uh, common schemes, a common notification pattern, but the notification come come from the events occurring in many many services in Microsoft 65. So. What is it about? More concretely, you can see here that we have Microsoft 365 with all the services that it includes. And um, let's say that you want to build a system, a solution, then you want actually the information that you get in Microsoft 365. You want to be notified that something has changed in one of the service. So we will use graph that surface um, Microsoft 365 and then Microsoft Graph will notify the changes that has appeared uh, or that have occurred in one of these services. So basically, here on the right, you can see mostly the resources that are supported now in Microsoft Graph V1. So it could be changes in exchange with mailbox, with users and groups in Azure AD, chat messages that are currently in beta. Uh, it, it is one exception here. Um, you have the shop on this content and the files in OneDrive and also the security alerts. So it, most likely it is what is covered and supported now in the, in the V1. So it, it has to be done in uh, initialization step where you create the subscription, and after this, you receive the notification. So first of all, we want to create a notification. So our webhook, if you don't really know what it is, it is a public URL. Um, it is a URL that you can reach. In the case of Microsoft Graph, the URL must be public URLs. So in our system, we will have a, a public URL that we will need to expose. Um, to create the subscription, we have the JSON that you can see uh, here. It is, we, we uh -huh. specify the notification that, uh, uh, the notification URL, sorry. It is the URL of our web server. And it could be whatever, we'll see it. It could be a Azure function, but it could be also a app service in Azure, or it could be a web server in your local premises. And then we will say we want to subscribe to changes that occurs to that resource here. And we have to specify also the expiration of the subscription. We'll see that in a minute. So with this uh, subscription that we want to create, we put this, this JSON and send it through a POST request a post HTTP request to the dedicated endpoint in Microsoft Graph. So basically it is slash subscri subscriptions. When Microsoft Graph received this, it will immediately try to validate that the, the URL that we subscribed is valid. Uh, it is a valid uh, webhook. So it will immediately contact it by sending uh, um, a query um, a request with a parameter in the query string that is called validation token. And we need to respond within 10 seconds with a success code and just pass it the validation token as it is. And when it is done, then the subscription is created in Microsoft Graph. The notification, uh, once it is created, 
we will have to handle the notification. So we have still our service. We, we'll still, we have still Microsoft 365 and Microsoft Graph. And let's say, for instance, that in our case, we will focus on when an email arrives in the user's mailbox. So the, um, the activity occurs in Exchange Online. Exchange will relay its change through Microsoft Graph. And Microsoft Graph will send a notification through an HTTP POST request to our um, cell, um, webhook. Typically, we don't want the webhook to do uh, complex stuff. We want it to respond right away. And so a, a, it receives the, the notification, then pass it to a backend process, whatever we want to do with it but it responds within maximum 30 seconds uh, with a success HTTP code to Microsoft Graph. What if it, if it does not respond within 30 seconds, Microsoft Graph will consider the notification never arrived. So later on, it will try resending it. And it will do until there, uh, there is a successful call, it will do it several times during, during about four hours. After four hours, the notification will be forever lost. So let's try it with a demo here. So I will use uh, really um, basic tools here just for the experiment. Uh, I will use Graph Explorer to create a subscription, and um, I will use the in portal uh, Azure function. So first of all, I will create my webhook. I already have one here, but just to let you see how it is done, I create in my function app here, I create a new HTTP trigger, and I will call it webhook PNP. And I want to make it anonymous because the, the, URL, the URL must be accessible by anyone without any authentication scheme. I create it and hopefully it will be quite fast. Okay, so what I have to make sure is uh, that it accepts post uh, HTTP request. Okay, so by default it does. And that's basically it here. Okay, I can switch the code. And I will just take my cheat sheet here with the code that I prepare and copy it. And so what do, do I do in the code here? It's really simple. I handle the validation step. So if I see in the query a validation token parameter, I just resend it as the body, as plain text. If not, I just display in the console the, the notification that I received. But here it is where you're supposed to pass along the notification to uh, every backend process and to do whatever you want to do with it. So I just check that I'm saved. OK. And just to make sure that it is running, I will test it here. It is should be running okay i do that because if i don't uh the the, um, the azure function in consumption plan won't be warmed up yet and so remember in my slide that in the validation step you have to re respond within 10 seconds and so microsoft graph won't accept it if it is not already running uh, so it is saved, okay. Uh, and then now I have to go to Graph Explorer and you see that currently if I type subscription and get, I have already a subscription which I think I <laughs> cleaned before. Uh, let me quickly do it. Uh, Delete. Okay, so now not 
delete, get. Okay, so now I have a clean set of subscription and I will create a new one. So to create a new one, I send a post uh, a GDB request with not this one, um, this one here. And so it's basically the same JSON, except that that you saw in the slide, except that I will have to get the URL of uh, my new webhook. Okay, and I will want to uh, subscribe to my messages. So webhooks will be uh, smart enough to convert this to the appropriate user slash and my ID. And I need to specify an expiration date time that will be not later than three days from now, about three days. So it's tomorrow, so we should be good. So if I run it, okay, it is created. So you see that I have an ID here, so 3069, so something like this. If I check here in the log, and I did not, uh, I did not open it. Too bad. But you would have seen that it it uh, it would have locked the validation token, and then we returned it. Uh, but okay, so now I have uh, a subscription to my messages or so my emails in exchange. If I check here. Me, not MS. What is going on? Uh, it's You're in post. Uh, yeah. Sorry. Thank you, Reza. Yep. So, yes, I see some messages that I have in my various folders and so on. Uh, let me open up Outlook and I will send a message to myself. Okay. Test and send it. <clears throat> okay, so I received it. And you see here that I have received a notification. Okay, and I will just paste this in my VS Code uh, to make it more clear. And you see that it is. Well, my subscription, so 30, 3069, and it it tells me that I have a, a, something that changed that has been updated on that resource. And that resource, so user slash ID slash message slash, slash the ID of the message, is if all went well. My message indeed so basically with that uh, in place i can then uh, query graph on in my backend system uh, and do whatever i i need to do with the data that's changed in microsoft 365 and it is basically it for the demo so i will switch back for a next couple of slides so some important consideration is that the subscription Maximum lifetime is quite short for almost every resource uh, resources uh, types in V1. It is a, a bit less than three days, a bit less than 72 hours, actually. So what you will have to do in your system is that you will be responsible for updating the lifetime of the subscription before it expires, because when it is, it is expired, it is simply deleted and notification won't be sent anymore. Uh, after 30 second timeout, so it is what I said uh, just before, after 30 second timeout, Microsoft will consider a notification are not received and resend it later. So you have to make sure that your webhook responds as fast as possible. And rather do the, the less possible uh, task in the webhook itself, but rather pass along the notification to a backend system, uh, a background job or something. The notification are not immediate. It's important to consider because you should not expect them to, arri to arrive immediately 
because it really depends on the type of the resources you are subscribing to. Here for the mails and the events in Outlook, it is quite immediate for, um, based on my experience, for notification on users and groups and so on. It might take a few minutes. According to the documentation, it, is, it should be maximum 15 minutes for receiving the notification. So you should not use webhooks expecting real-time notification for critical uh, stuff. Webhook must have HTTPS public reachable URL. So it means that if your webhook is on your local premises, for instance, you will have to deal with the firewall, DNS, and so on and so forth. Webhooks are public and have no authentication. It means that anyone could try to, 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 to spoof you and to, to say that something happened. So you should be really careful of, of the code that you are writing in the webhook itself. So what you can do uh, as one step towards security is that in the in the subscription you can specify a client secret uh, not the client secret sorry a client state that is secret and this one should be known only by graph and your endpoint and if it sends the secret it means that it should be graph but it is one step uh, ahead in security but still not if someone gets to know your secret, it can spoof the, 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 the notification as well. And uh, so you have to make sure that you won't cause any risk to your system or to your Microsoft 365 tenant by directly in this um, in the code of this webhook. You will have to make sure that you put everything that you can to validate that it has to be uh, secure enough. Um, and last thing, notification do not contain data. It is not true in the beta uh, version of Microsoft Graph because in, in beta version, you have some endpoint that accept uh, what is called rich notification that contains some content, but it has to be uh, ciphered with a certificate and so on. It's a bit more tricky, in my opinion, to, to, to set up, but it also allows more complex scenarios. So, but for V1, uh, your system in turn needs to call Microsoft Graph with the identifier of the resource that has changed. Now, and Yannick, so, I, I, I yes, do I apologize. I'll jump on this one because from You're a timing perspective, we, we need to unfortunately move forward. And uh, just a few pointers, um, just to call out uh, things as well. So obviously the the, the subscriptions and web hooks in the craft are super, super powerful. There's a massive amount of different options related on that. I'll, I'll add a list of different uh, resources, um, uh, which you can actually subscribe to. Just as an example, for all of the incoming messages in a Teams or events which are getting created or any single SharePoint list or library is getting created in a tenant. You can subscribe to that event and then modify yeah. that list based on your business requirements. So super, super, super powerful. Also, yeah. one thing that I wanted to call out because Vincent is in the call. So we, we uh, Paul was already helpful and updated the thing that you don't actually have to be necessarily anonymous with the endpoint. So Vincent, can you actually quickly yeah. explain that? Vincent being an ex-MVP nowadays in the craft team implementing some of this stuff. So. Sure. Uh, hi, everyone. So thank you, uh, Yannick, for the great demo to begin with. Um, I, I don't want to take too much time because I know there is another uh, demonstration right after that. Um, so you do have a couple of ways you can authenticate and authenticate with uh, webhooks. You mentioned the client secret to begin with. So that's a shared secret between Graph and your service that has to stay secret by a sense, right? Another way is to make sure if you're using rich notifications, they can come with certificate authentication and certificate uh, signing of a payload. So you're sure that the payload comes from Microsoft Graph and it's secured and it cannot be decrypted by anybody else and so on and so forth. And a third thing that we're previewing is the ability to receive change notifications, not through webhooks, so not through an HTTP post, but through um, 
Azure even hubs uh, instead. So that's really great for cases where you are behind a firewall or you are already using some Azure services or you want high performance. And one of the great things about uh, even hubs is that it is authenticated by default. So the whole a string of notifications will be secured and authenticated uh, by default. And feel free to reach out to me if you have any uh, questions. And with that, I don't want to take more time from Bert because I know Bert has uh, uh, great demonstrations to, to, to follow with. So thank you, everyone, and have a great day, everyone. Thanks, Vincent. Thanks.